Hey, what's up? It's Pete Thorn. I'm here at the legendary Harpo's Concert Theater in Detroit, Michigan. Big show going on tonight with a whole bunch of bands. We've got Mr. George Cajon Jr. here. His band is playing second to last, I think, right? Yes. And you guys are Cairo Knife Fight. <laughs> My first, you, we've been friends for a little while. Yeah, playing with Black Eyed Peas, Fergie, doing yep. all that kind of work. So that's how I got to know you. And yes. then I heard that you had this band, mm -hmm. Cairo Knife Fight, and Dave Friedman was telling me about your amazing guitar rig and all the cool stuff you're doing with tones and stuff. And I was like, that sounds cool. And I had no idea, like, just how crazy and cool it is. <laughs> so this one's going to be really fun because it's deep. Cairo Knife Fight is two people. Yes. And and so you're doing a lot. Yes. You're covering a lot of territory. I, I just wonder how you guys got together and how you like kindred spirits come together to make this crazy music and, you know. Well, I was in New Zealand writing. Um, I got hired to write an album. At that session, I met two of Nick Gaffney's best friends that he lived with, but I didn't know Nick at that point. Okay. So fast forward, they moved to LA. So right. eventually they moved into the house in front of my studio. Okay. And Nick literally just moved into that house. Okay. And so we met in my studio. I was Just random. Random. Because the band originated in New Zealand and, um, you know, they were doing stuff, opening up for Queens of the Stone Age and, and, yeah. and Foo Fighters. Anytime the big bands went to New Zealand, Kyle and I Fight would open up if they got lucky enough to be asked to do it. But he moved to America to start the band over. I see. And the first guitar player that he ran into was me in the backyard of my studio. <laughs> wow, 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 wow. That's and so cool, I fell yeah. in love with the band, and when I started watching the videos, I really loved what Aaron was, was doing in, in the band, the original guitar player. Mm -hmm. But I thought I could make it a little more intense. Okay. And he, he was just using two boogies and a, a bass amp, and that's it, and using mm -hmm. pogs and stuff to, to, he wasn't splitting them, he wasn't muting them or nothing, it was just all off. <laughs> okay, so when you saw what was going on with the drum scene and yeah. and and that and looping the kind of co concept conceptual, you saw like, hey man, I could take this to a whole nother level using exactly. a similar thing with the guitar. And, exactly. Right? I, I started literally going to Dave Freeman's shop and asking him questions like, mm. how can I do this? How can I do that? How can I do this? And we started concepting and building this. This is the fifth ver fifth Dave, right? Yeah. Fifth version of this. Now, all this is doing is mimicking the big refrigerator that we built to record the album. Okay. The big problem I had was, okay, I had all these ideas, all these pedals I wanted to use, and, and idea, uh, ways how to route everything. Yeah. And so, you know, the easiest way to do it is put it in a big old rack. I see. But it wasn't tour ready, and there's no way that in the small gigs you're walking around with that big old rack. So after the album was done, I had to figure out how to interpret everything that I recorded with a smaller version. And this okay. is the one now that I use all the time. So and I mean, it's an incredibly big sound with two people. And what I see that you got going on is like, just sort of conceptually, it seems like a very, very dynamic guitar sound that's really heavy, a lot of power. Sometimes it sounds like a bass. Yes. And, but yeah, there's a lot of ambient effects going on at the same yes. time, right? So, so my, you... con my concept with the whole thing is to, cr is kind of, Andy Summers meets Edge meets, you know, uh, Tony Iommi and, and Josh. <laughs> and yeah, Put it all yeah. in, in a blender. And, yeah. and so the way I, I like the 
to think in the way of creating palettes of sound that are underneath what he's doing. So all of the ambient stuff is creating a bed that we can play on top. And that's why there's so many amps. The problem I was having when I was just using a stereo rig with a bass yeah. is we did a tour and there was no definition to me. When I would play on top of the stuff, notes were lost. Like you don't yeah. hear the top end, you don't hear the bottom end. And that's how another thing that I knew from the get-go that I didn't want to do any looping in front of the amp because the looping takes away the, the natural compression of yeah. a tube amp, which is why would we have two bands if you don't get the, the sensitivity? And so when the, the looper is hitting it constantly, yeah. it's taking that, that's getting it, and you're not getting it. Right, right. So when you do it through the back, through the effects loop, then it leaves the touch sensitivity in the front. I, I mean, no matter what, with um, guitar rigs, it seems like the way to get the most sort of clarity and definition, if you can deal with it, is some sort of wet, dry, wet situation. Exactly. Which is what you're doing, but in a exactly. way that I've never seen. I mean, the classic wet, dry, wet kind of situation that I've seen is like, you know, you got a Marshall amplifier in the center driving into a dry cabinet, and you're taking a tap off the output of that, going to some effects and splitting into maybe two 412s yeah. or 112s or something like that. Now you got your center dry, and there's your definition, and then you got the effects on the sides. But what you're doing is like adding a bass amplifier, adding a. So maybe we should talk about the amplifiers. So the bass signal that I, when I'm playing bass, we, uh, both Nick and I share the duties of bass. Yeah. So one of the problems that we were having in the beginning was we had to bring two bass rigs. So that's one of the things I asked Dave, fix that. Okay. So we can just bring one. Okay. So now we're sharing. I, my rig goes to his pedal board. Okay. And then that goes to this bass. Okay. So he plays bass with his left hand on that keyboard. Oh. When cool. I'm doing more intricate guitar parts, he's playing bass with his left hand. When I'm, he's playing drums and singing and he can't play bass with his left hand, I take over the bass duties. And uh. for that, I use um, a guitar that's tuned A to A. And so I'm not using a, a pitch pedal or anything. And that's just going straight to the bass end. Right, and we'll show that guitar in yeah. a bit, but it's literally, you said you got a 68 on a the... Si 13 to 68. Yeah, very, yeah. very heavy string, so it's yeah. almost like a bass, short-scale yeah. bass. Okay, so, so, so you've got all that coming through here. All of that coming through here by itself. And I, this has none of the effects of the, of the... The only effect that's going into this is one fuzz pedal is in front of everything okay. most of the time, and including this. Okay. Because the fuzz pedal gives it that real dynamic punch and I basically do the, the, the Hendrix thing. I roll back the volume, and so it's not completely out of control fuzz, but I'm using it right. just for an extra boost okay. so that everything sounds massively big. And it's a Mesa... Uh, a okay, Subway okay. D800 Plus. Okay, cool, with a couple of cabs here, it looks yeah. like. Two uh, 10s and uh, 115. And a 15, cool. Uh, 800 watts. Right. Yeah, so it does the job, and I always take a DI out to, to the house so that it gives it the the beef. Okay, cool. Now let's move on to the dry amps maybe. Yes. Like just real quick. So the B100 is completely dry and it only comes on in the choruses. Ah, okay. Only in the choruses. Get bigger. It once louder. the loudest that we get, yeah. that's on. Cool. Okay. It's never on other than when it's like, okay, we're we're going to kick you in the face now. <laughs> okay. And then the other dry amp is that uh, Three Monkeys, right? The Three Monkeys is dry and that's the way I like to describe it. These amps don't they're always cascading in volume. Yeah. So when, I f when we do verses and I'm using the stereo Dirty Shirley's, I also filter them with the Mobius so that I can drop another couple dB in volume while okay. he's singing. We'll show that in a yeah, minute. Yeah, we'll show that in a minute. But, further, but, so this yeah. one is, these guys are doing all the palettes of delays and time-based stuff and crazy sounds, and this one is the definition in the middle. And then this one is your get loud, get drop. loud, crazy. Okay. Yeah. So just to you know, these two guys running dry all the time into a couple of cabinets with yeah, they have pedals in front, so there's fuzz, that kind of thing running in front, but there's no any kind of time-based effects going through that one, this amplifier, or the three monkeys. Well, the only time there's time-based effects going in front of this. Mm. 
is one timeline that goes in the front of the amps, but I barely use that one only for craziness. Okay, so he's got two delays. One is running in front of the amps, and the other one is in the effects loops. Of, yes. Let's move on then. That's a nice segue into these two guys. The two Dirty Shirley's are your kind of wet amps, right? They're the wet amps, and okay. they're basically doing all the, the hard work. Okay. They're, the loops are going through there. All the, t the, the pallets of sound are going through there. Everything's happening in those two amps. So that's like the core of everything. Okay. All the other amps are just to, to give definition, and, and the B100 is beef. Okay. And so yeah, that's so basically the, all of it. And it's very cool. I mean, there's no way. I, I ran a three amp rig once. Yeah. And I used to basically have a clean amp, a dirty amp, but then I had a third amp that I could switch in for solos. Yeah. And it would just make everything get louder. And there's kind of nothing that substitutes for that. No. Like switching another amplifier in on top of the other ones. It's so cool. Dave it's, doesn't want to hear this, but that's what's left. Yeah. Is I want to <laughs> have one amp that's just on if I want to play that's completely dry, ah. come no, nothing on it, right. and that's not in the, the, in the same family. Yeah, yeah, that, and er, I totally get it, because yeah. it's, it's, there's, it's addictive. When you start piling different amps, you get this complexity of tone that you can't get any other Any worse, and I can right. show you, I'll show you in a second. Okay, just really quick, why don't we move on to uh, description a little bit of the pedals then. It's a Friedman pedal board, right, with a buffer yes. bay? Yes, and um, the, the buffer bay were, basically using to pass MIDI to the other board okay. and to connect the two boards together. Okay, so the, the buffer bay is kind of like almost like a junction box that also has a, uh, a buffered input. That, yes. Do you use the buffer? I do use a buffer apparently. Okay, so that's your input out of there and then you're running through. What are some of the, uh, some of the drives and stuff that you're using? Okay, so that's uh, a Dirty Boy Fuzzy Boy. Uh, that's the Blue Sarsano pedals. Right. It's my favorite fuzz. Um, it's the reason I, I use it so much, it's the quietest fuzz I've, I've found. So even in my other gigs, I use that fuzz because it's, if I'm doubling a bass line or anything, I literally turn it on and lower my volume mm. and it's like this really beefy double that you're doing. It works the same concept here. Like these amps sound great without anything in front of them, but when you just turn that on and lower the, you're getting, I think it's 20 dB of boost, wow, if wow. I'm not mistaken. It sounded humongous when you were playing. Yeah, earlier. so we'll that, that. Yeah, that thing is on most of the time. Mm. I would say 80% of the time it's always in signal, including to the bass amp. Interesting, yeah. So it goes from, so that, if that's on, it goes to all the amps, and then it, this, Bass driver and the POG 2, that's another key to this, is I'm running the fuzz and the bass driver before the POG, which is what gives it, if when I use that, it really becomes massively big. Kind of blows the POG up. And yes, it blows it up, and then you're getting this like almost synth bass tone that I only use on one song right now, but it is pretty massive. It's the biggest part of the band. So the reason I use the, the bass driver is I, it's just for EQ. I put high end to the fuzz. Okay. So it's a little more def defined on uh, in the bass amp. The That's the only bit. reason I do that. It gives it a little dirtiness to it. That's okay. different than the amps. Because all the amps have that going on, so yeah. there's no definition between the, the bass amp. And so this actually gives it a unique tone in the bass amp. Yeah, and we'll show in a second, but you kind of set all the amps besides the bass amp. Everything's grindy, a little bit kind of like classic rock grind, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. And then you're piling uh, yes. uh, some fuzz on top of that and building the shaping I, the tone. I'm a big guy of volume. Like volume knob. Volume knob. On the guitar. Yeah. Amps a little dirty, volume knob, that's how I get any clean tone. Great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you've also got a Friedman, uh, it's the Fuzz Fiend, is that Yes, right? the Fuzz Fiend is what I use for, I use it for primarily for its uh, rage button. I, it, ah, ah, yeah. I, I turn it on, I lower my volume. It's and a momentary then, switch, right? Yeah. yeah, and if I want a solo on anything, I turn that on and it, it, gives, it, it gives that kind of Eric Johnson like fuzz face tone. Mm -hmm. and, and then if, if I hold it, you can do the craziness, the bup, 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 thing that it does. Cool. And then what is, what's that uh, Tensor pedal? The Red Panda Tensor I'm using right now as it's one of the only pedals right now that uh, it recently came out. It does a tape stop. 
Oh, okay. So you can do that to kind of do, like drop sound. Yeah, it doesn't do it with pitch. It actually tape stops. So it goes. And oh, stops. you gotta show us that. That yeah. sounds cool. Okay. So that's one of the only pedals that do that. And so I wanted it. I put it on the board for the next album. I basically right now use it for a trick. But okay. it does have a lot of really interesting sounds for the next record. Wow, so cool, cool, cool. What's the uh, Earthquaker pedal? The, uh... That's just a big, con big commander. Oh, big commander. Okay. Yeah, and so. It's one of the songs that I use. Um, it's literally just coming. It's everything's clean except for the three monkeys, mm. and it's giving me kind of like a broken speaker sound. Okay, cool. Yeah, cool, cool. and see, I, you know, I didn't really. I, it's it was in the big rack, mm. and it made it to the record, right. and it's on a part that you cannot not play. <laughs> so, it, so it had to be on the damn pedal board, <laughs> and nothing does what that does. So it's like okay, it's got to be on there always now. I know how that is. It takes, yeah. up, it takes up a lot of real estate for like one, one like, 30 second sound. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> okay, and then the, the, the big white pedal beside that, what's that? I haven't seen Hol that. Hologram Infinity Jets. Okay. So that's another thing that I'm going to do for the next record. I'm always thinking like 10 years down the line. Okay, okay I've done these sounds. What am I going to do next? Right, right. And since I got to be really creative with spacing because okay it's got to be a pedal that's going to live on here for another year or two at least mm -hmm. and maybe even another two album cycle mm -hmm. in order for it to get real estate so it better be special because it's it, big it, right these <laughs> things do so many things and the reason i wanted that is um one of the things that i do on stage live is when i'm creating a loop i'll, I'll mess with the knobs okay that one when I learned how to do it, I haven't figured it out yet, and I'm not even going to get into it until the next album. Yeah, you can control the, the you can uh, record the movements of the knobs. You literally oh. just hold the center button and you move the knobs. Whatever noise it's doing, it records it and it continues to do that. Oh, very cool. Yeah. So I thought, okay, I can really put that to use in my loops later on. Very interesting. That's cool. Well, we've almost covered most of the the sort of drives and well this pedals. one a too more, right? revolver is okay. so this is um the hexi revolver dx pedal um i saw david torn using that and fell in love with what he was doing with that and so i thought it'd be something i can add to this world where it's just two people where i'm always looking for creative ways to create landscapes that are different from day to day right and so that's one of those things that i put it on the board and there's a section of one of the slower songs that we do that I'm just holding a note. You literally, I turn it on and it takes off by itself. Mm. And so he did this, this thing is very interesting. This Vario switch, you go, you plug it into the expression pedal jack of the revolver. Okay. And so essentially what this is doing is when you're going like that, mm. in order to make that thing do crazy sounds, you have to actually go like this. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll show this too. Instead of bending down, you just hit it. And it's, you can adjust the actual levels as if you were going from 0 to 10 or Amazing. 8 to 10. And all you have to do is hit it once, and it's doing that movement. It's like turning the knobs with your feet, doing an expression kind of thing. Exactly. Cool, cool. cool. But cool. the cool thing is, with your foot, there's hardly, it's really hard to get that sweet spot where you're going. Yeah. This yeah. thing, if you hit it, just you're tapping it, it's going perfectly like going between two preset two, knob pre positions. two two preset knob positions and it's doing it perfectly so you actually can get really unique sounds I'll show you that too that's super cool that totally makes sense so one of the very important about that pedal mm. the revolver this is one thing that I also noticed as we were, we started touring and doing more shows is certain things like at the very end of the, one of the reasons I use that other timeline in front of the amps, it, that's the only one that's going in front of all the amps. Mm -hmm. And I set up infinite regeneration presets so that when I'm switching guitars, mm. it's going, the, all the amps are going, zhoo, 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 and there's never a dead moment. Okay. So when I'm moving, and there's still information in going between on. Songs, you're in between songs, you Yes. Yeah. Segways. And so as I started creating patches, there was one, one song at the end of the night where this thing's going crazy and I noticed that's the loudest point of the show. Mm. That's the loudest my amps get, the loudest everything is. I have to be able to use that creatively. That's the only pedal that's in front of everything. Okay. So that thing, whatever noise it's making, it's in front of all the amps. So okay. it is loud. So I wanted that, 
the highest dynamic point is coming from that thing. When you turn that on. When I turn that on, that's taking off and, and so. Okay. So let's get to the time-based stuff. Like it's, yeah, yeah, moving into that. So it's all Strymon stuff, uh, Timeline, Mobius, and Big Sky. And I love the Strymon stuff, but the thing I love the most about the Strymon stuff is the functionality you get with MIDI. Okay. So I'm, effect I'm holding verbs with, with MIDI, sending control changes from the RJM. Uh, I'm changing delay times. I'm doing all kinds of stuff like that. And it's really the only, it, there's other pedals that do it, but you know, like the Chase Bliss audio stuff does it as well, mm -hmm. but you have to have a special box right, right. with a special connector. And so in, as far as space saving, these made the most sense to me. And, you know, we all know how good they sound. But those are the yeah. only, everything now, this is the last addition we made to this, is that one of the mistakes I made in designing this the last time was I forgot to tell Dave that I wanted to loop the Mobius and the Big Sky as well. The okay. Big Rack has that. I see. This one didn't, and I didn't figure it out until <laughs> way later. Oh, it was a mistake I made, and then I was like, why does it sound so different when I loop that part? Because it was only looping the timeline. Oh, I see. <laughs> so it wasn't looping the, the reverb or the modulations or the filters, so it was a big mistake. So now he fixed it. Oh, oh okay. And so everything now is going into the infinity looper on the left, and okay. I can create loops that then go in the effects loop of the Two Dirty Shirley's and the front of house. Okay. And those loops go to the summing mixer over there that goes directly into Nick's ears. Okay. So when, when he's playing, he's getting all my loops in his ears so he can actually play in time to the loops. Wow, wow. So yeah. everything bleeds. Like, one of the reasons we set up so close to each other is yeah. we want the mics to catch some of the things that are going on with the guitar because it creates very unique loops when he does a loop. Right, right. So you know, some really places it's a nightmare. Because, like, for example, this place is so big that it can potentially be boomy. Mm. And so you're going to get that boominess in the loop. And now it's like, oh my God, how do I follow this? Right, because there's so much sub. <laughs> there's and, so much sub. And yeah. it, so it, it can be challenging, but that's okay. the whole point of this band. You're either going to come and see us and see magic happen or a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> but it's seriously living on the edge. Living on I the mean, edge. There's no playback tracks. There's no, we create all this stuff live on the spot, good or bad. Right. Yeah. Good or bad. We live on the edge on, in this band. So, yeah, all the timeline stuff is being recorded into Looper if I want. Okay. And so all the time-based stuff is in on the, this Big Sky, the Mobius, and that timeline is in the effects loop. And then the other one is in the front of all the amps. Right. So one timeline's running in front of the amps, and all the other, the other three pedals of delay, mod, Big Sky reverb, those are all in the loops of, of those two. two. Yes. OK, we should get into uh, to showing some of this stuff, okay. you because know, it's crazy. <laughs> As we're going, uh, George is going to switch guitars, and you can maybe tell us about some of the guitars and why okay. you make that choice for a certain sound or song, that sort of thing. This is the, the very first one that Dave gave to me. OK. Um, love this one. This is the very first one that I got and used it a lot. Is I this guitar in kind of standard tuning? Or this no? one's D to D. D to D. So okay. a whole step down. Whole step down. Yes. Okay. And uh, 11 to 52. OK. And to, maybe you can show us some of the tones that you do okay. with this one, eh? Yes, I'll show you. So this is going to be um, a really wide reverb -y patch that's only right now coming from the two Dirty Shirley's and the three Monkeys. That's it. Thank you. 
right, so that was the tensor doing the tape side thing, and then I held the reverb on the Big Sky to play on top of it. So you're sending the, the Big Sky a CC message in order to uh, uh, get it to hold, right? Yes. Out of, out of the RJM, you've yes. got a, uh, a button assigned to send it a, a hold uh, CC, yes. right? And that's the cool thing with the RJM that um, how I use it is I set up it as a patch. So like that part of the show where I'm going to hold that reverb, yeah. when I go to that patch, it switches the scene so it goes straight to the pedal that I just have to hit it once and then I okay. move on. I so see. I'm not pressing through all these different, uh, you know, because there's a lot of different options I have here. Yeah. And I have, I think, 10 pages. <laughs> okay, so you've got it configured to like, so when you go to that sound, it's quite easy to send that CC. Exactly. Once I hit the pedal, it sends the message to switch the, the page, and yeah. then I just have to hit one more pedal, and it does that. Cool. I didn't do that that time. I was uh -huh. actually scrolling through the different pages. Got it. Okay, so I also, I also should mention just that when you were playing that super cool Phrygian stuff, and I dig your vibrato so much, you've got, and I've never, you would only know this like kind of looking behind the neck like I am right now, but you do the, the, the thumb off the neck yeah. vibrato. It's great. <laughs> I, I wish I could do that better. Really? I'm, practice, I'm practicing doing that style of vibrato, but it's really cool. Yeah. It's like that clapton y kind of thing. Yeah. Right? It's really cool. Anyway, uh, great tone. That was amazing. Okay, so else? Uh, I'll go to a clean sound so you can, you can hear more of what the amps are doing and yeah. I'll go volume wise and scale wise I'll show you what it does yeah maybe maybe we could uh, uh, show each of the you know different amplifiers I'll start with the this is going to be the dirty Shirley's and it, right now there's only a, a, a short d uh, tape delay on it and I'll show you how the lowest volume and the next stage with just the dirty Shirley's okay so the lowest volume I filter with I filter it with the Mobius, Mobius right. in this the effects. This is kind of the lo-fi uh, parameter yes. on there, right? Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be a demonstration of kind of one of the smallest sounds. This is just the two dirty Shirley's. We're going to start with those two, and you're going to use the Mobius, right, to kind of filter the sound of the two amps to make it even yes. kind of smaller and thinner. Even right? smaller, yeah. So I'll turn on the filter and turn it off so you can hear the difference in volume scaling. Okay. So. That's the lo-fi parameter, right? In yes. The, uh, or algorithm, whatever yes. you want to call it. In, yeah, you know, the vinyl Mobius. thing, I think they call it. With vinyl, yeah. and it's got the bits, so you can do lower yeah, bits. I lower the bits, and, yeah. and it's really effective, because I can even get way lower than that. Right. But it almost gets inaudible over right. drums. Right. So that's like the lowest I can get. Okay. So, and this is just the Dirty Shirley's by themselves. I'll show you that. Okay. So this will be them completely wet and just by themselves. Okay. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So, on this sound, I'll add the three monkeys so you can hear the type of definition that that amp adds to this sound. Okay, yeah, yeah. So you're hearing the depth. Now let's let's do that with completely dry sound so you can hear what the amps sound with nothing on them. The Dirty Shirley's will always have this particular delay is on all the time. Okay. So this is as driest as they're gonna get. Okay. And is is that kind of because you like uh there always to be a little bit of ambience, a little bit of stuff going on. Like a totally yeah. bone dry guitar sound is a bummer. Sometimes. Actually, it's my favorite thing in the world. Just oh. <laughs> going guitar, cable, amp, there's right. nothing like it. Okay. But for this band, don't work. Okay, okay. For your music. <laughs> don't work. Got it. So now this is the Three Monkeys by itself. Okay. It's 
got a little spring reverb on it, right? That's, that's it. Yeah. Which it's is, actually a you know. plate. On those, it's a plate. Oh, really? And it really does get out of the way of the plane, which is why I love that amp so much. Yeah. Good sounding. Yeah, sounds yeah. great. Here's the B100 by itself. This is all it's doing. I can totally do a loop and show you how I do all that and, okay. and then play on top of it. Great. So You're this, a mad scientist, that's what you are. <laughs> this is how I use the, fu the fuzz, uh, fuzz Fiend. So primarily it's a clean, kind of a clean fuzz. Wow, and with the effects that you have happening, it's just super cool. Um, just makes it a really, really dynamic sound. Because you can get crazy with it, right? And yeah. then it's it's echoing over, and then you're going back to the clean. Back fuzz, to the clean, still and I, I can actually, and because of the the different amps on, I actually have definition in in my notes and in the chords I'm playing. Yeah. All that it, with all that going on. Yeah. It would be lost without the other amps involved. Now we're gonna get into the big fat beefy world, okay, which is cool. A to A. So this guitar's got an Evertune bridge and it's A to A with super heavy strings, right? Yes. Uh, the reason I put the Evertune on there with A to A, it's really hard to keep those mm. in pitch and in time. I mean, in, in tune. With the Evertune, there is absolutely no problem. I never have to think about it. Amazing. It's always in tune. And the Evertune is a bridge for those that don't know that basically you set it up, put the strings on the guitar, and the guitar is in tune and it stays in tune forever. So this Sorry. is a Don Grosh retro classic. I've owned it for many years and then I just put the Evertune on it to keep these strings from going crazy. So I was playing this earlier and Pete wanted me to do this sound. What the effects are doing on here is during the chorus of this song, the effects are regenerating upon themselves and they never stop. So it becomes completely out of control, but I want that because Nick is playing a pattern that gives you like this craziness, but I'm actually able to play on top of it and have definition. And um, on this particular song, I'm also triggering loops with my left foot. So the, in the overdubs that I did on the record, mm. Uh, I had to figure out how to do them live. So mm. I knew when I was creating the, the parts, that they couldn't be longer than a bar. Okay. So it's kind of very challenging to create these parts knowing that you have to be able to keep them in time. Since we're not playing a click, mm. the only way that I keep it in time is if I can go step, step, step. Or you go longer than a bar and you're... Tri it, yeah, it, it, it this one's out, two. Right? Yeah. This one is two, so that's about the max that you can do. Wow, and, wow. and you'll hear it. Okay. So here's the sound without the loops. Now I'll, I'll add. 
inside the loops. Okay. Super cool. So yeah, I see you're triggering it every two bars. You got to tap. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's let's show that without all the craziness going oh, on. Okay. Okay. Is that going to front of house as well as yes. going through your rig? Yes. Really dynamic live. When we hit that part, people are just like, how does this band sound that big? Well, right. yeah, those loops are being blared through the PA. And before we end all this, I want to do a loop with Nick so you can see okay. what, how it sounds when we both do a simple loop. Okay, so uh, just one last thing with this particular sound. Check out what happens when he removes the dry amps and just the wet amps are on. It still sounds cool, but you lose the definition of those dry amps. So here's just the Dirty Shirley's. You're making me want to go back to a wet dry setup right now. <laughs> this is so cool. It still sounds great with just the dirty Shirley's, but you don't get that clarity in the riff. So, so I'll switch though. guitars to the last guitar I'll use for this. And is Nick here?
So we're here with Nick Gaffney, drummer from Cairo Knife Fight. But you're not just a drummer. You got so much going on over here. It's like super interesting. I know. Uh, maybe you can give us like a quick uh, demonstration yeah. slash explanation of your incredible rig you have here besides just the drums. Yeah. Well, uh, bring it the simplest way possible. I do a lot of live drum looping. So I've got a kick mic, a snare mic, and a smash mic here. Okay. And we run that through this summing uh, mixer here and a Motu and through Ableton, which just basically is our interface. Uh, our, our, we put everything through there and run plugins on like all the channels and stuff. We don't run any tracks off here. This just sits, sits in a static place. Live looping, right? It's yeah, it's all live yeah. looping. There's no pre-recorded stuff really. And then um, I also play some left-hand keyboard bass when George isn't doing it. Okay. And I'm also the singer. Right. <laughs> yeah, because I like to make everything more difficult than it has to be. So I can give you a basic demonstration of how we set up some of our stuff. Like Fantastic. Simplest thing is the, the old-fashioned drum loop. And that comes through here and we run like some EQs and compression on it and make it a bit more gnarly and... Yeah, it sounds great coming back as a loop. Yeah. It's so cool. It does actually. That sounds better than I remember it from yesterday. <laughs> it's great. Sweet. So that's basically the simplest thing. We've got some, you know, Dave Friedman built this board. Uh, for us, which, you know, because I'm doing bass and we're sharing the bass channel, we put a little mixer on here, so both the basses come into this one mixer here and then get blended, because obviously they're different uh, strengths. Mm -hmm. um, his is a lot louder than mine usually. Blend it, goes to one bass rig, saves time. And it's a boss looper that you're using, right? Yeah, it's the RC300. There's okay. nothing really out there that does exactly what I need it to do, so we have to kind of jimmy things together, and they've helped us a lot with that you know, making it sound as good as it possibly can, even though it's right. not exactly designed to do what I'm doing with it. Could you show me um, how you play bass and drums at the same time, like what that sounds like and looks like? Yeah. Basically. Simplest thing would be that last track that we just did. Okay. The key to it for me is that I just try not to mess anything up. <laughs> That's it. That's my only goal. <laughs> Simple as that, really. And then, well, except you got to sing at the same time. Oh yeah, too, yeah. Right? Which is, I, you don't have to show that, but no. you've got a lot going on. That's all I'm well, trying to say. Well, it is. It's <laughs> it's much easier to, to sing whatever you you sing in a band like this when you wrote it yourself. Uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've tried to learn some covers before. Mm -hmm. It's practically impossible because I didn't write it. It's not in my natural wheelhouse. The drum parts are not what I'd normally play. So that's right. um, this is a lot easier than uh, than it looks, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was that was terrific. Thanks so much for thank you showing us your scene.